this uh, presentation that I'm going to show to you uh, this morning is our collections of the work that I did in covering the three American wars that took place uh, in the first Gulf War in 1991. Uh, the second one that I covered was the war in terror in Afghanistan that was in the year 2001. And uh, the third one, which was the uh, Iraq invasion of uh, 2003. Uh, this is in the perspective of uh, what uh, is being shown here right now, which is uh, designing peace, uh, the role of uh, photographers, the role of artists in uh, contributing to understanding of uh, the issues around us. So, uh, I'll start with uh, what uh, you're seeing at the moment is uh, was taken in, uh, uh, this was in 19, uh, March 1991. Uh, this is a troop formation of this uh, elite uh, French uh, Spahi regiment uh, in uh, Kuwait. In the Middle East, specifically Iraq, the Americans are trapped, right? And how to get out of that uh, conflict, I think Obama now is trying to fast track the, the uh, troop uh, pull out of the American forces by next year. So it's, it's uh, walking around, looking around for pictures and trying to create images that would uh, uh, give symbols to what are the current and raging issues. And such is the symbolism of uh, this uh, image when in one particular morning, that was, we were prepared to take off from this uh, forward base. Uh, this was in the uh, captured Iraqi military air base. I think it was about second or third day when we crossed over to Iraq together with the massive invasion force of the US uh, forces and the Allied forces. Uh, it was morning and we were ready to take off and then suddenly there was strong gust of winds uh, all over and I thought it was just well, it's going to disappear in about a few minutes. It didn't disappear, it went on 15 minutes, 30 minutes, so it happened to be a sandstorm. And that was the first experience I had with a sandstorm. And it was like a typhoon signal number three here with all those al and all those Buhangin and all those bits and pieces of rocks hitting you like uh, uh, non-stop uh, the whole day. Uh, stay with the unit. Uh, we have to undergo a crash course on uh, survival. So part of this was a uh, 20 minute uh, briefing about how to wear your uh, NBC suit, so nuclear, biological, chemical suit. And uh, you have to wear it within a certain time, like three minutes or five minutes when you hear the alarm. Uh, 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 so once you hear that, uh, you don't run for your life. But uh, first, before you run for your life, you have to wear your suit first. And then you can run and hide. Uh, but then, so I, I uh, wanted to show something different of, uh, because the sensation that uh, when I wore that gas mask was quite a uh, discomforting uh, sensation. So I wanted to show the same feeling, the same sensation. So I said, ah, okay, I'm looking through the mask and if I can make and illustrate this in pictures, it might work. And that's when I pulled out the mask and then I was shooting from through the mask uh, with my camera. And what's being, uh, what you can see here is uh, on the right side there's the instructor and there's a model of how to properly wear the suit. And this on the left side there are a group of uh, journalists listening and uh, for their uh, first 30 minutes of uh, briefing and they'll be deployed to different military units. So one of the Apache helicopters, which was the unit that I was assigned was this 4th Aviation Brigade. So these are the combat pilots who fly this uh, Apache helicopter, they fly this Black Hawk, they fly this, uh, seen, I'm sure you've seen the movie Black Hawk Down. So uh, I was lucky enough to cross Iraq riding a Black Hawk helicopter, which took me about an hour and a half and my colleagues, my poor colleagues had to undergo 24 hour land convoy, the 48 hour land convoy just to roll 
through the border and into Iraq. Next slide, please. Uh, so in my uh, 41 days of uh, being with the U.S. military soldiers, uh, you interact, you know? and, and uh, as a journalist, as an outsider, it was difficult because you know, these are military people. And the more, the more than 500 journalists who were embedded, some had a good experience, some had a bad experience, which was expected because uh, it's, it's, it's a tough organization. But I think there was an instruction from the U.S. State Department, uh, this embedding policy that uh, was offered to the journalists to have a uh, front row of the war through the American side, but uh, the uh, reports and the pictures that you do will have to be censored. So anyway, part of the interaction that I uh, experienced was, you know, I come into contact with the pilots, with soldiers, so one, one day they told me, okay, uh, Romy, uh, come with me, I'll show you, I'll, I'll have to arm my uh, chopper and uh, I'll show you how I do it, so okay, so uh, I went with him and uh, showed me how he he does it, okay, this is how I put my missile, and then it's going to blast uh, uh, all the enemies uh, in front of me, and blah, blah, blah. And boom, and I rushed out, and I saw this scene, uh, dust flying around. So I rushed, I ran, and tried to take the picture, but the soldier stopped me. I said, I have to take this picture. No, you cannot. No, no, I tell you, I have to take this. And, uh, well, it's, it's difficult to have an argument with the... Uh, uh, lower ranking soldiers, and the best way is to find the officer which uh, Colonel Pass was around. Okay, hey, Colonel, this is a story for me. I have to shoot this picture. You tell your guys that I have to shoot. So, okay, I said, okay, let him shoot. So, that's uh, what happened here. The helicopter was flying, and uh, the pilot, they have this scary ex uh, experience. They call it uh, brown out. So, in the swirl of dust, so they're surrounded 360 of uh, brown cloud of dust and they can't see anything. And what's dangerous is a uh, gust of wind can uh, swing them left and right and that propeller can hit the ground and that caused this uh, crash. Next slide. Through almost uh, flying uh, low to the ground. So everything was clear. So it was just a very quick shot of uh, what was happening when we crossed into Iraq. Next slide, please. Uh, war is something like, uh, it takes so much of your uh, uh, mental uh, capability that uh, soldiers, these are engineers and technicians of uh, the fighting uh, uh, units of the aviation brigade. So they release tension by playing this thing, they, they play hockey sack, they play, do other funny things. So not uh, all the things that they do in the war is all, you know, uh, jumping on their guns, but uh, there are times when they have to distress themselves in that uh, difficult situation, which is, uh, I found the plane, so I said, can I take your picture for the way I do is I have to ask permission first. Oh, okay, go ahead, yeah, you can take a picture, you can join us, you can play with us. Oh, no, I'll take picture first and I'll join you later, so. And uh, I played, so I was playing SIPA before, and I can play the same game. Oh, you play well, yeah, I play this. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> Next slide. Uh, uh, race or, or was put down. So, and the wind was so strong, no? cyclone signal number three. So those guys started to play with their, their ponchos and started to, you know, uh, oh, I'll jump and watch me if I can fly. So they were trying to fly in that strong wind. So, and then he was falling and he was rolling. The three guys were just slapping all over. So that was on the, uh, the lighter side of the conflict. Next slide. Of photographs in terms of propaganda. On this particular day, when the Saddam's information minister have declared that the Iraqis have killed all the American soldiers that uh, during that fight at the Saddam International Airport, and what's on the American side? And the American side was saying that we have successfully taken over Saddam International Airport. It's a major victory for the Allied forces. But these are all reports, and radio reports, and print reports. So I have experienced this in other situations, and this 
is where the value of the picture is. It's a visual evidence. Right? So I said, Colonel, uh, there's fighting in the airport. Can you take me there? Uh, yeah, just uh, wait uh, a while because I'll have to send this uh, chopper's air ambulance. It's going to pick up some of our casualty. Okay, so just be ready when it comes. And then the choppers came and I took the flight. So we were landing and what I saw was all these scenes of American forces, tanks and devastated Iraqi planes. And there was not a single Iraqi soldiers around. So that disproves what Iraq was trying to propagandize. And then I know the value of this picture will confirm the reality of what was happening in the ground. So I know that the, the urgency of the material, so right away, I think I made in my caption something. So I take my picture, I write my caption and very briefly that uh, American forces have taken over Saddam International Airport with all their uh, tanks and, and soldiers uh, on April 3 or something. So uh, you read something, uh, parang you tend to conclude uh, a fact. You see something, it's an evidence. Actions of the Iraqis in the hundreds of guests of uh, this American soldier. So it ranged from hostile, vicious, friendly, smiling, and those are the kind of reactions that I witnessed. And uh, these three villagers was in that group of happy mood. And, uh, but then what was uh, unusual here is the barrel of the gun, which in the first time I brought the camera, I said, uh, hey, uh, Sergeant, can you take out your gun because it's in my picture? Uh, okay, so he took out his gun and then I was shooting the picture. Oh, I think something's missing. But then that's when I realized that the gun had a use in my picture, in my story. Because that's the only small part of the weapon that can symbolize the entry of the U.S. military forces. Uh, uh, outside the Saddam International Airport, so all the, the, the main road was littered with mine, so just to delay the advance of the American forces into the central Baghdad. Airport was just about from uh, uh, outside of the city. So it's just to show uh, what they did here, and it's, I, I saw the scene, I waited for something to happen and there was this two soldier three soldier but uh, i think the best one was this single soldier walking by so you can see the comparison how massive uh, 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 landmines that they have planted along the main road next slide and of course they won't know but uh, being in the palace so you have all these uh, uh forces and, and Washroom, so it's one reason. But uh, to them, I think it's you know it's it's some kind of an experience to see uh, Saddam's palace with so many bathroom and toilet. So right. next slide. Uh, still the palace, and uh, I spent two days there, so coming in and out, and uh, I saw this friendly. I was just waiting for something to happen and soldiers went by, walking in, walking out, and there were three, there were two, there were, there were four, and uh, out of that, so many pictures that I did, it's, it was this, you know, the two soldiers walking out and this chandelier, so that's how uh, I prepare my shot, you know. I, I spot an area, I study, if I have time, I wait. If I don't have time, I rush. But if I have time, I wait. So this is what I got. Next slide. There are pictures or stories that they're not happy about that we can achieve because of censorship. Okay, next slide. Uh, and they captured Saddam. They cannot find him, so they found this portrait. So they <laughs> captured a big portrait of him inside the palace. So that's one lighter side of the world. So this was at the airport. That's the full view of the airport in the background. And uh, lucky when we were stationed there, not a single bomb hit the airport because if that happened, 
all these uh, helicopters and, and, and soldiers uh, could die in an instant and uh, one missile landed outside of the airport where two journalists were killed and uh, three or more than five soldiers were killed. You know? So uh, that's just uh, dangers of uh, being with the military unit. Next slide, please. Um, I think right now is your war with uh, what your grades will be, right? <laughs> of what uh, your teachers will tell you. So that's your simple war right now. You have to attend to that, right? And uh, so this was uh, a scene of uh, when, again, the, the Iraqi militia, which at the time they picked up, the guy was alive, and then when it landed, he was dead. I wanted to illustrate uh, the death of uh, this Iraqi militia, that the symbol of this soldier bowing down, he was just bowing down from the gust of wind that all these helicopters were swirling. But uh, the way it looked, it's like you know, some kind of a gesture of giving uh, another reaction for someone who died. But it's something, it can be deceiving, but it's something that can reinforce the story of your image. Right? And then on the uh, side of the accuracy, I had to ask if I can have it my way, I will try to find out who this guy is, where did he come from, and uh, why did he die. But being embedded in a military organization, they can only give me information that was from their source. So they said that uh, this is uh, Iraqi militia, and uh, he died during the combat, which I said in my caption, uh, soldiers brought down a body of an Iraqi militia uh, that uh, was uh, who, who died uh, after a clash with the American forces. But uh, to be fair, is we have units or we have uh, journalists that were not embedded with the U.S. military organization and that they are on the other side, and on the other side being on the Iraqi side. So that's how we play the game. Ten. Uh, journalists from AFP were embedded, five photographers, myself, and five journalists. And then the others, about 75 of us from AFP, were scattered in the theater of war from uh, Iraq, Kuwait, to, uh, uh, to all the other uh, neighboring countries. So that's where we try to balance the information because they know that the information that we are putting out are censored materials. So that's one way, because that's what was being allowed, that, uh, that, that what we can report. So next slide. Who are suffering from the effects of the war. And uh, I saw this girl, I saw this lady. Uh, she was sitting close to the ground, head bowed. And I saw it from behind. I said, it's not a good, a good picture from behind. I have to go in front. But if I have to go in front, she will see me. Okay. I was ready. I have to shoot. I have to be ready with an answer. The answer is... Uh, no, shoot first and then ask questions later. Or ask permission later. And she looked up and she saw me. I was ready for two reactions and say, son of a bitch, you get out of here right now. I'll shoot you right away. I was ready for that. Uh, but then my next uh, uh, move was, I'm sorry, I have to take your picture because I'm doing this story and I found you sitting there right under the sun beside your gun and if you didn't mind, can I have your name? And then she said, okay. So she gave her name and uh, uh, she wasn't hostile at all. So I was ready for two reactions, anything from hostile, anything from friendly. So you don't have to be caught up. The American soldier, the Iraqi soldier, both are human to me. They have the same blood. I don't make any distinction whether he's American, whether he's Iraqi, it's still a human life to me. So the way I do it is it's not glorifying whether he's an Iraqi or whether he's an American, but it's a human life that died, that got killed. And uh, this means you have to be strong and uh, this is the 
uh, what I saw, I witnessed, and I had to uh, tell the world that uh, this is what happens during war. These are the casualties, which is an everyday scene. Next slide. Imam Hussein, who was uh, the leader of uh, uh, that area, came to Karbala to uh, ask reinforcement from, this is during the ancient times, and uh, when the people from Karbala committed and then the battle came, nobody came. So Imam Hussein fought uh, almost single-handedly, of course he died, his head was decapitated, brought to Syria. And so it's a way of, of, of how the tradition went on of repenting for what they promised that they not, that never came for Imam Hussein. And this is part of the tradition, this is part of the religion, which you have to understand. And uh, Americans also try to understand, but to some level of understanding. So in photographing faces, you have to spot the most dramatic faces in a crowd of a hundred, in a crowd of a thousand. And what I, want, I, what I wanted to show is the same faces that you can see even during those ancient times. So there's a historical connection from how they look before to how they look now. So it's incredible when I was in Afghanistan, when the place looked like a set from the Hollywood, was straight from the medieval period, all the people wearing their burqa, all women wearing their burqa, and, and uh, shalwar kameez, the men were wearing. So, uh, expressions of emotion, so this is more about uh, the spiritual uh, uh, emotion during the pilgrimage to Karbala. Next slide. For one week, they were all coming by the thousands. And I was watching from the second floor of the hotel, and I saw this group. They were just walking in. And then they passed me, and I saw the beautiful shapes of their head. But then it just head. So I needed somebody to look back so I can see the face. And someone looked back and I missed the shot. That shot. But then uh, human nature tells, once you look back, you look again. Right? <laughs> so you look back, you didn't see, and then you confirm to the second look. And that was the second look and I was ready for that. And then I got it and it made a lot of difference to the image, to the picture. Right. Next slide. I had seven shots and he disappeared. The last shot was the best shot and this was the best shot. And uh, immediately I saw it. You know, It's a simple image, a simple background, the skyline, the summit of Tora Bora Mountain, the symbolism of the Tora Bora Mountain, of this Mujahideen, on top of the Tora Bora mountain. So, with this, immediately I sent the picture, I opened my laptop, everything, and prepared the picture using a satellite phone, transmitted that, and uh, put it out right away. And uh, one week after, I got a call from the news picture manager of the Asia Pacific, and uh, he asked, how am I doing? Oh, it's tough time here. And uh, anyway, I have good news for you. That picture you sent came out in the cover of Time magazine. That was December 24, 2001, year ender issue of the Time magazine. Right. Next time, you look at the picture. It's an Israel plane bombing uh, Lebanese uh, position during 2006 war in Lebanon. And the next picture, again, this picture was discovered a cheat by digital manipulation. The original picture, next slide, is this. So the photographer, just to make the situation dramatic, photoshopped the effect, added more rocket, added more smokestack in what was his previous original image. And the photographer got fired because you never touch any element the picture when you're talking about photojournalism. You can touch a small spot, a small dust, but you don't remove, you don't add any element. So poor guy, so he was out of uh, business, but that's how we treat this business seriously. And uh, knowing the power of the pictures, it's 
in this uh, Vietnam War. If would anybody here remember any literature about Vietnam War? Or would you, if I show you a picture, it would immediately tell you. The next slide. This was the Pulitzer Prize winning photograph taken by Nick Wood, uh, a Vietnamese photographer, on that particular day when napalm bomb, uh, napalm bomb was dropped and uh, it hit the village, all these civilians, the children running, uh, badly burned, and the horror, it's everything, it's what you can see here. And in terms of story, it's, it's, this is what, I'm sure you've seen this picture, in all those history books about Vietnam War. And then when you talk about Vietnam War, remember this, the next slide. And uh, another horror scene of, uh, a Viet Cong guerrilla in a street execution style, another Pulitzer Prize winning shot by uh, Eddie Adam. This is the power of photography. This is the power of photojournalism. That uh, we take this seriously. That uh, in this career, in this profession that I do, and all my colleagues here, that uh, it's, it's something uh, it can talk about uh, the situation happening around us in times of war and times of peace. Next slide. Uh, how's uh, can you go to the next folder double click effectively stripping the Filipino veterans of their rights so whatever was promised to them disappeared and what was happening now that uh, they were getting all these benefits it's not what they fought for it's more than that so uh, I did this series about uh, my father is one of them, and this is my father and during his uh, final moments. And uh, up to the end, he fought hard of trying to get that uh, benefit of, of fighting for the rights of the other war veterans. And there's not, on, there's not one of them. There were more than 250,000 of them. Okay. Next slide. So now, they, when the Supreme Court ruled against the memorandum of agreement. I have advised Mark Navales, our correspondent in Cotabato, make your way to camp, uh, uh, one of their camp in, in, uh, uh, near Cotabato and shoot the picture because today it's going to be crucial. And uh, right away, the decision went out, the Supreme Court scrapped the MOA, and uh, this was the time when I think it was the Ramadan period and they were praying. So the symbolism of them praying, of them preparing to war, of whatever happens, of their fight for their homeland. Next slide. So it was bloodshed, violence, and the group of MILF uh, rebels attacked two towns, Oswogan. And this is a scene that uh, how else can you illustrate war? when uh, blood is blood, flesh is flesh, and death is death that you see. And uh, I think this is where the power of picture would influence the mind, the opinion of the public. You see here a dead civilian, you see here soldiers coming in, reinforcing after the attack, the next slide. But also you can see images of hope. It's not only war, it's not only bloodshed. What's the alternative to that? You know, that uh, Christian, Muslim children would like to grow up in a peaceful place, in a peaceful country where there is no war. But then all this thing that's happening around is not what they see. And next slide. And that photograph that I did, uh, inquiry you see it in their front page, I think they can right away see the symbolism of the image of the photograph that the photographer did and then they can see the value of it in the daily uh, picture of the war scenes of course it's not only war that people would like to look at it's, it's about uh, the hope to creating peace of a peaceful world next slide and uh, what's more brutal are children who are victims of war you know getting caught between this conflict. 
And uh, one of these photographs that was taken from the, by an anonymous photographer right after a military aircraft had uh, returned fire and hit all these uh, civilians who were on a boat. And uh, this is the result. This is uh, what you see here. And uh, it's, it's different when you see these pictures appear on the papers. It's like you see it, you read it, and then after that, you put down the paper, you go to uh, what's going to be your schedule for today. But then, this exhibit of designing peace, which is uh, it's, it's a great uh, endeavor that, uh, to discuss this, to be shown here, the Museum of Contemporary Arts and Design. And uh, it's something that is so relevant now that uh, you are confronted by all these images. The longer you stand in front of them, the longer it confronts you. It tells their story, not a different, it's totally different way from what you can see in the papers. So thanks to all these venues of, of uh, MCAD, all these uh, galleries that are putting seriously the uh, works of uh, photographers and uh, there's a value to it. Uh, next slide. And uh, Mindanao, this is Basila. It was right after the Abu Sayyaf had taken hostages and took over uh, Basila and there was this fight to free the hostages. So the church of Father Laporta was left in shambles and there was this cross miraculously was left standing right there in the middle of the devastation. So, next slide. Contribute uh, with the use of photography in bringing understanding. So this is one way of our contribution of the role that uh, we do and uh, we take this seriously. And that's, I'm ready for questions if there's any. you have given us today and you know and, and the contribution uh, the contribution that you personally are making and your uh, colleagues to uh, bringing about peace and, and, and helping our young people especially to become more conscious of the need for peace in our country by conveying messages as you have so thank you very very much Mr.